Hey, welcome to EPN and EP Live. It is so great to have everybody here. We are starting with something a little bit different today. Uh, we have decided that uh, while we're in town, we're going to try to do as many of the uh, rundown segments as we can live as well, in addition to the rest of the content that we're putting together for you today. We've got a hell of a show. We've got Rerez and Sid Bolton. Uh, Rerez is, uh, I know him as Rerez, is, is Shane Lewis is joining us with Sid Bolton. We're going to talk about some N64 goodness in a bit. But first, we have to get to the rundown, and we've got to dedicate this to a couple of new uh, uh, sponsors. Thank you so much. Welcome to the VR Grid. Awesome name. And Greg Robinson, thank you for your support of EPN. This rundown is all yours. And we're going to get started with news about Star Wars Rebels. It's coming to an end. Disney has announced that the final three episodes are going to air on February 19th, February 26th, and March 5th. And this is going to bring the show and its characters to an epic finale. Now, earlier, um, I guess it was last year. Oh, man, we're in 2018. Things are moving so quickly. It was last year. Uh, I was at Star Wars Celebration, lucky enough to uh, attend many of the panels. One of them that I went to was Star Wars Rebels and the fervor and the fan love for Dave Filoni and his creations was something to behold. It is uh, with great sadness that this show is coming to a close. I haven't seen every single episode. I've seen a, a, a bunch and they've been scattered. I've got the Blu-rays for season one and two, and I'm, I'm waiting kind of to collect it all and get ensconced in it, just like I did with Clone Wars. And Blake wrote down some uh, some talking points for me. Um, but what I think Rebels means and Dave Filoni and Clone Wars means, um, there's a maturity to the way that this guy puts his stories together, and they're very, very uh, surprising and satisfying. It's great Star Wars mythology, and uh, that was very true of the Clone Wars, and I think Rebels started off with maybe a little bit less of um, you know, a budgetary push, and uh, there was a lot of concern and consternation that Clone Wars wrapped up as quickly as it did, because Disney, of course, wanted its own Star Wars animated show, but Rebels really grew into something very, very special with lots of great cameos from very famous characters, uh, voiced sometimes by actors that we're familiar with. And uh, they did an amazing job. They have been doing an amazing job with this. I am very curious to see where Filoni goes. I do think that there, we're going to see more uh, Star Wars animated stuff at every tier. I mean, we saw the, uh, the recent... Uh, uh, Star Wars adventure series that was focusing on the females, the strong female leads that are in uh, the Star Wars universe. I thought that was cool, all these little mini shows. Uh, but I do think we're going to see more Star Wars animated stuff, but I feel like Dave Filoni is about to kick it up to another level. And of course, there's a Star Wars live action television show that's coming. I would not be surprised if he is the showrunner on that. So we're going to hear some very cool Star Wars news uh, soon around uh, what the future of animation means for the company and for the brand and also for uh, what Dave Filoni has got up his sleeve. Uh, moving on to Duncan Jones, who is also one of my favorite to topics in entertainment these days. I love this guy. Moon, Source Code, and Warcraft movie director Duncan Jones has announced that his new movie titled Mute... Uh, it will be released on February 23rd, 2018. So it's coming up next month. He was tweeting over the weekend, by the, by the way. I don't know if anybody noticed this. You guys should follow him. He's very funny. Uh, and he's, uh, he's always got really cool, lucid commentary on things. But he was tweeting that he wanted the weekend to be over. I think it's because he wanted to announce the release date of Mute. Now, it's not being released in theaters. It's instead being released on Netflix. And this is going to be exclusive to the streaming service. It stars Alex Skarsgård, Justin Thoreau, and Paul Rudd and takes place in a futuristic dystopian world where a mute bartender struggles to find his missing girlfriend. The look, tone, and themes are inspired by Moon, which is phenomenal, and I encourage everybody to watch that movie. Absolutely wonderful film, and it's billed as a spiritual successor to that film. Now, this uh, in the in the wake of Bright, which uh, I'll have a review for soon on EP Live, um, is kind of pointing that movie. Bright, by the way, stars Will Smith. Uh, and they're spending some serious money, clearly, in all of their series that they're doing. But now that they're getting into this uh, um, sort of almost theatrical game with some of the movies that they're releasing, it really does point to a new future for uh, movie distribution and for massive celebrities to kind of make the decision to, to you know, move into projects that Netflix is paying for, which is incredible, and it must send a fever chill through the heart of every uh, theater owner 
uh, out there and every executive that works for these big theater companies. The world is changing. It's happening quickly, right before our eyes right here. And Annihilation is another big uh, uh, sci-fi flick that Netflix is participating in. And it's going to have early, if not uh, on the day, digital distribution. That's, uh, I think, directed by Ar Alex Garland. Incredible time to be into sci-fi like this and to have all of this uh, immediate accessibility and these great, you know, massive budgets and cool ideas and cool concepts. Very, very much looking forward to seeing what Duncan Jones has got up his sleeve with Mute. Uh, we've got a little bit of bad news here. The final version of We Happy Few has been delayed again. It was originally slated to, originally slated to arrive in April, but developer Compulsion Games needs a little more time, so they've pushed it to this summer. Specifically, they say the opening of the game needs uh, more work, so they're, go they're going back to the drawing board to rebuild the intro levels. Uh, an unfinished version of the game has already been playable in early access since last year. Now, this is a game that has... Um, uh, kind of a trippy 60s kind of vibe, almost like uh, we're watching an old episode of that 60s show, The Avengers, fused with a little bit of uh, uh, Bioshock undertones or overtones, uh, and it looks amazing. It looks uh, psychologically twisted, it looks a little violent, uh, and it looks uh, mature as hell, and it looks like it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. And this, I think, is a shining example of what happens when you put your game into early access. You are basically opening up your product to the world to focus test it for you, and they probably got all kinds of feedback that the, uh, the beginning needed more work. And I, I think Compulsion Games, who has been in the business for a while, building lots of indie titles for, for us over the years, uh, is trying to kind of... Uh, uh, sort of go on the wake of this hype for this game to uh, to reach another level and to kind of, you know, hit some new heights for the studio. My fingers are crossed. I can't wait to play the final on this one. This is one that I haven't really gone in to take a look at at Early Access. I want to get the... I mean, look, they're finished. They're fixing the beginning. They're changing things up at the opening of the game. So they clearly, uh, it's not finished, you know, and I don't want to have a, uh, this is me, you know, this doesn't have to be everybody out there, but this is me. I don't like to have, especially story-based games, uh, out too soon. You know, I'd rather the developer take the time to polish it. And Frankly, this uh, opening it up to the world and, and everybody kind of beta testing the thing is going to end up in a, a to, to be a better game for those that wait. And it's also cool for those that are curious to kind of participate and help these games along and, and plunk their money down and put their feedback in uh, and learn from that experience. And I presume that a lot of people that do that, uh, you know, ha have an innate appreciation and a fascination for games, but maybe want to build games themselves. And what better way than to actually actively, uh, you know, help with the development of these things. So um, I can't wait for We Happy Few. Take your time, Compulsion Games. Just make that game kick-ass, okay? Uh, speaking of kick-ass games, Image and Form has announced uh, that the original SteamWorld Dig will be released on the Nintendo Switch on February 1st. This is great news. The SteamWorld Dig 2 ended up in my list of my uh, 10 favorite 2017 games. I loved SteamWorld Dig 1. I played like I played it like crazy on the 3DS, and it's been out on every other platform. It's a perfect fit on the Switch. There's tons of little cool details and lots of great little animation that now will be uh, zoomed in a little or, or expanded outward a little bit, so it's going to pop on the screen. I can't wait for that. It was first released in 2013, and Image and Form announced that they were bringing the game to the new Nintendo system last year, alongside the announcement of the of the uh, sequel, SteamWorld Dig 2. The game was released back in that game was released back in September. Everybody that has a Switch owes it to themselves to get on the eShop. The, but wait, actually, if this game is coming out on February 1st, which is like in a week, wait, because they might have some, um, some uh, you, you know, double pack deals or something like that. You're going to want both of them. Trust me, you're going to want to play SteamWorld Dig 2 if you have a Switch, and you're going to want one after you get two. Um, the game was released back in September. That game was released back in September, which means the games are coming out uh, backwards on the Switch, which is totally cool. Um, I am psyched. This is an amazing developer. They're based in, uh, in Sweden, in Gothenburg. Um, in 2013 or 14, we had uh, one of the heads of the studio uh, in one of our Vic's Basement live podcasts, and he was fantastic. I just, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a fan of creativity and inventiveness like that. They've done an amazing job with that series. 
Now, I've got time to uh, look at the chat. Does anybody have any questions or comments, uh, you know, specific to this news? Is anybody following along? Remember, help us out. Uh, and thank you, everybody that has uh, tuned in live. That's the cool thing about EP Live is that we uh, we broadcast this out as often as we can when we're in Vancouver. And I'm, I'm prefacing this because some of our travel schedule is starting to uh, come together already. And we've got some dates that we're going to be away. So on the days that we can't be here, we won't be able to do live. Obviously, we'll, we'll still continue to create rundown content for you. And uh, This Day and Everything Cool is going to happen every single day. If some of you noticed, we ran This Day is Everything Cool uh, or This Day and Everything Cool over the weekend as well. So every day we're trying to get one of those videos out for you. Uh, but if you've got a question or a comment about any of this stuff, uh, let us know. Um, but uh, that's going to be the way that we put uh, a lot of our content together, including the rundown. We want you guys to be a part of this as often as you can. So if you're watching this in an archive format, uh, thank you. Uh, but know that you can come and join us and uh, be a part of the show as well. And the other cool thing that we're going to be doing um, through several days uh, in the future is uh, asking our viewers to submit video content and stuff that we'll actually be able to slap in and slide into things. We're not quite there in because we're we're still kind of figuring out the whole flow of how everything works technically and show-wise, but we're, we're getting close.